Um, one thing that I had a problem with when I got my Tesla was uh, connecting to the Wi-Fi network at my apartment. I live in an apartment complex and uh, the way uh, the parking works is uh, I got the covered parking which is a little bit uh, farther away from my apartment so the Wi-Fi signal was really poor and um, one way to overcome that was um, what I did is I moved the car next to my apartment uh, I put the password and I was able to connect and although now I'm parking my car um, in the parking spot uh, the Tesla is still able to access the Wi-Fi network now granted this is not ideal but it's something uh, I can live with and um, I was able to get the updates in the car. So let me show you right now what's happening on my dash. So here you can see that uh, my Wi-Fi is really poor, but even though it's poor, uh, I still get access to uh, um, the Tesla OTA updates over the air updates. So that works. Um, the thing is also like when I, put the car in gear so if I push on the brake pedal so Tesla automatically switches uh, to LTE once I put it in D so boom there you go and the reason for that is once you put it in D that means like uh, you're leaving your home so there's not gonna be any more Wi-Fi uh, so the car automatically switches off Wi-Fi and moves to LTE uh, my experience with the LTE, uh, so far so good. Um, you know, I have uh, T-Mobile on my cell phone with the Pixel 2 XL and the car is connected to AT&T. And as I drive outside the city, um, for the most part, I guess AT&T gets a better coverage than T-Mobile. Um, but the nice thing is that I have two networks. So most of the time I'm watching, I don't know, YouTube, listening to some podcast on my phone. But let's say you go into a dead zone or there's no signal in the area you're driving. The car still has um, connectivity through the AT&T network. So I have two options. If the car loses the, um, the LTE coverage, I can still tether from my phone through T-Mobile. The other way around is if I lose T-Mobile, I still have AT&T through the car. So that kind of gives me a little bit of sense of comfort. Um, what I also like is uh, I don't have to pay for LTE, which is nice. So as long as I have this vehicle, I get the LTE. And I was able to stream music um, through podcasting and um, radio channels, you know, and so forth. And because Tesla has LTE, uh, so the car is always connected. That means I get always up-to-date traffic updates. So you get to see uh, if there's any traffic jam. So let's wait for this. And there you go. It's all gone, I guess. Uh, nice, nice. The other thing is uh, you get also update regarding the supercharger, so you get to see how busy they are. Why? Because uh, this is lively updated um, and that gives you the ability to check the supercharger before heading there to make sure if it's available or if it's fully busy. Um, with the traffic updates you also uh, have access to online streaming. so. You can follow your uh, programs. So let me head back. You can see uh, some of the podcasts that I'm interested in. And uh, that's kind of nice because uh, you basically, you can use that uh, while on the road. Um, you can also follow other things. You also have access to other streaming. So you can follow some of the um, radio stations. So let me kind of go back. What is it? So let me. Tum, 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 tum. There you go. So this is some of my favorite uh, radio stations that I can just tap on and uh, listen. So let's. Uh, I don't know. Let's pick up something. So let's say um, Hitiani Radio. And it's so fast, you know. 
So I like that part because um, I always feel like, you know, I'm connected, you know, um, and uh, you can also do uh, those type of maps just like Google Maps. And uh, that's fantastic. In terms of connectivity, um, it's connected through the AT&T network. You can turn on uh, Wi-Fi if you wish. Uh, so let me try to see if we can uh, hook up to maybe McDonald's Wi-Fi. Most of the issues with uh, free Wi-Fi is that the Tesla does not pop up the uh, login screen. So although sometimes it can connect, but uh, sometimes uh, you have to authenticate like the one in a Starbucks. Luckily, the McDonald's one over there actually uh, uh, seems to be working. So uh, let's pull up the web browser. So let's go up and uh, I don't know, hit the verge, the, 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 the verge.com uh, and tap. Wow. All right. Well, let's see. We got the connected. Uh, uh, my uh, camera holder fell off. So uh, last time I checked, the one in the Starbucks didn't work. So I'm not sure about the one in McDonald's. Uh, let's see. Logging in. Please wait. So I don't know if this works or not. Um, let's say let's try the verge again maybe it works now tuk, tuk, tuk. all right so we still have this issue where the Tesla Wi-Fi cannot connect to public networks like McDonald's Starbucks and stuff like that because it cannot render uh, the web page but here's the nice thing so Tesla announced that they are moving the web browser to chromium project which is the same source code or the open source of Google Chrome so hopefully when that happens we will be able to log in into uh, public Wi-Fi networks which means faster internet access to the car so maybe then the car can update itself do the OTA at the public network say in case you don't have any Wi-Fi at home so that's kind of cool um, but for the most part with the AT&T network at least in the US um, I've hardly had any problems occasionally like really rarely I lose um, connectivity but then it comes back pretty quickly um, but because I have a T-Mobile network on my uh, Pixel 2 XL I can always tether internet to the car just say in worst case scenario the other benefit is um, having an always connected cars uh, give you a couple other nice features so with the Tesla app you can always locate the car um, not only in, say, the parking lot, but if you hand the car to um, somebody else and they can drive it, you can actually follow them on the map and see where they are going with the car. So you can always track your car, which adds another cool feature is in case somebody stole your car, uh, because the car is always connected, um, the police can identify the car quickly and follow it and get it back to you. So uh, it's really hard to steal Teslas because they are connected, you just have to report it, it's stolen uh, in the um, unfortunate event that thing happens and you're able to get your car back so um, so far like I think like having LTE with the car um, it's really cool um, I, I can't really see it like any other way because um, it's like losing your connectivity to the phone um so you lose a lot of things in the car and uh one more thing that i like to do is sometimes let's say i'm driving outside the city and uh, i'm listening to a podcast on my phone and um i lose the signal sometimes t-mobile doesn't have uh, the best coverage to be honest with you then at least the car still has internet connection through at&t and that lets me um, stream something you know while driving till uh, I get back to the network and um, I was going to say the best feature is that I don't have to pay anything for all this so LTE comes in with the car 
I don't have to pay uh, an annual uh, renewal fee. Um, there's no limit on the data that you can pull it through, and um, that's that's kind of cool. That's really cool. Um, in terms of the Wi-Fi, uh, you need to have Wi-Fi to get uh, over-the-air updates. So you gotta have some some sort of a Wi-Fi connection to the car. Otherwise, it like randomly it pops up a screen when you wake up in the morning and start to drive, saying like you need to connect the car to Wi-Fi. And the other thing is having the Wi-Fi, as far as I understood from the Tesla forums, that uh, the car sends all the logs from autopilot and such back to the Tesla servers um, at night. The third benefit is, um, you know, you get the updated maps, which can be in, in several gigabytes over the Wi-Fi, because um, yeah, I guess having them over LTE would be not feasible for a the Tesla fleet that costs the company a lot of money and uh, it can be really slow. Uh, it's not like the fastest LTE you can get anyway. So um, having the Wi-Fi allows you to download the updated maps to the car. Um, the best part is that you still have uh, Google Maps in the car. So um, to be honest with you, I think it's a little bit inferior um, on several uh, fronts compared to Google Maps on the phone. There are a lot of limitations. I will do a separate video just to cover that, guys. Um, but in the meantime, you know, I hope you guys um, had a, a quick overview of um, why it's good to have LTE and Wi-Fi in the car. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave me a comment. And until then, take care and peace. Bye.